Hey everyone, I'm Hami and I'm going to go through with you today how to create your first uh, layout. Um, you can follow along uh, with the tutorial on my website by printing out the PDF version or simply opening it up on your screen uh, to watch it through there. I'm going to break this tutorial up into a couple videos so that uh, because I, it's such a long tutorial and these videos are going to be very long and I want them to be small enough for download purposes. Um, this tutorial is uh, designed to teach you certain techniques. It does not use a lot of papers and elements on the pages. Uh, it, it's designed to teach you some basic skills that you need to learn. First, let's uh, learn how to open up a new file for our layout. And if you've gone through the um, printing tutorial that I've, I have on my website, you can, um, you have l decided what size layout you want to create. Um, I do the uh, letter size papers. So go to the file drop down menu, new, and blank file, and you will get this pop up menu. Make sure that this is set to inches and just manually type in the size layout that you want to create. <coughs> Most scrappers create in 12 by 12 and, and print, I believe they print in 8 by 8, but I prefer the landscape rectangular of 11 by 8.5. The resolution is a very important setting. It needs to be set at 300. This is important uh, for printing purposes. Uh, if you um, read some of my other tutorials, you'll see there's a controversy. Many people think it's better at 200, but I'm going to suggest 300. The color mode is RBG, RGB and the background it doesn't really matter what this is set on because you can always change it later <coughs> the two most common are either transparent or white I'm gonna leave it on white click OK and you can see my new file and you can see that the background layer the first layer is white as I had designated but I can always delete that layer um, change it to transparent or whatever I want later so that is not something we need to fuss about. The next thing we need to do is to import some photos. So there are actually uh, several different ways. I'm going to show you uh, four ways that I know of. You can go to the file drop down menu, click open, navigate here's my desktop and I put a folder on here called large talons navigate to the folder uh, you can choose the thumbnail view I'm using um, XP find your photo and click open now I'm going to go ahead and close that Um, to show you uh, another way that you can do it. You can go to the file drop down menu, use place. A lot of people like to use this to uh, drag in, uh, to bring in their elements and I will show you why in just a moment. You can go find your photo again, click place and it brings it directly into your layout. Here you can see now there is your background layer and your photo layer. Hit the check mark to accept it and it's actually right in your layout. But why people like to use this especially to bring in elements is because you'll see the name of this layer is now the name of my photo and it can also be the name of your paper or your element and uh, that is really handy in giving credit. 
so you can bring that that's a really easy way to uh, bring in photos I'm gonna hit undo um, the third way is to drag from the bin so I'm going to go back to open and open that photo as I did before now once we get it open you say uh oh where did my uh, layout go I see my photo but I don't see my layout did it disappear well let let's take a look in the bin I'm gonna scoot this up so you can see the the bin there's a little arrow down here you can hide the bin and show the bin um, it sometimes it if this is drug all the way down you won't be able to see the bin and so you also need to drag it up and now you can see every open file that I have opened into Photoshop Elements. If I double click on this, there is my original file, that the new one that I created to make my layout in, and here is the photo. It is important, if you're going to use this method, to drag from the desktop down to the bin especially in Photoshop element 6 if you drag from if you drag from the bin up to the layout it will go in there but you'll see it's really done some funky things um, it's got a pass through blending mode and this little plus sign and it really is a uh, uh, messes up a lot of people. Where's my undo button? So you want to have your photo active and with your move tool selected drag down to your layout. And you can see now that here's the uh, background layer and here is the uh, photo layer. And so the photo is now right in the layout and you can uh, click down with the mouse as long as you're on the move tool and actually move this around. Go back to make your photo the active and click the X to close it out. To me that's very very important. You do not want to accidentally mess up your original photos. However, this is not the way I prefer to do it. I think that the bin actually takes up a lot of desktop space. I'm going to hit the undo button and I'm going to show you how I prefer to do this. I'm going to minimize my uh, Photoshop elements <coughs> and on my desktop here or wherever you have it navigate to your folder where you have your photos and open it up and now I already have this as a smaller size when mo the default setting is to have your folders uh, the large size all the way up uh, open maximized always already all the way maximized <laughs> getting tongue twisted today and so if you click this button between the minimize button and the X for the closeout button it will toggle uh, between maximize and a smaller version of a window